Mr. Buzzheads. Welcome to That Buzz Guy Podcast. I am Curtis Tucker, your host, and I am glad you guys are back for another episode. Don't forget, if you're listening to this on the podcast, there is also a companion YouTube video at youtube.com, Curtis Tucker TV. And if you're watching this, hello. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Please subscribe. And if you would like to just listen while you're driving or you're doing something around the house, you can just uh, get your favorite podcasting app and you can hear this episode there. Please subscribe on iTunes, leave me a review or something like that. And I just want to thank you guys for checking in. I am going to do, I'm going to hop right into it to get you guys right to the meat of this episode. I've been talking a lot about uh, web stuff here lately, and basically the reason is a lot of people are out of work, a lot of people are going to need a job, and I'm trying to encourage everybody to not go back to work, not go back to your job, but to stay home and try to make money online. Yeah, I know it's going to be hard to make money at first, but if you don't get started now, it's going to take even longer. So the first thing that you're going to need, no matter what you do, no matter if you're the best on Instagram, no matter if you've got a huge email list, no matter what, everybody needs a website. So uh, after my commandment number one, which is get started, get started right now, number two, three, four, somewhere in there is everybody needs a website. So I've been talking about how to start a website. There are a lot of places to start a website for free. You guys can go to blogger.com, Tumblr, Wix, Weebly, and just go ahead tonight. Tonight, tomorrow morning, start your own website, your blog. It doesn't have to be the one that you're gonna end up with, but it's just a way of getting you guys started. Uh, play with it for a month or two months or you know however long and start to learn how to upload photos and PDFs and videos and how to type and mess with fonts and colors and and so that's the whole purpose of getting started because once you get started then you're going to you're going to be able to learn where you're going to need to pivot or the things that you like or you don't like and then you may find out uh, that you just don't like web design at all which is fine you're still going to need a website uh, but you can keep it pretty simple and then you can just go to podcasting or doing a video but you still are going to need a website and the reason that uh, I think everybody needs a website is for me in the online space the website is your home it's it's the place where you, no matter what you're doing if you're on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, you can send people back to your website and your website is where you've got the about you page you've got photos you've got your hook you've got your story you've got your and I'm not big into funnels but if you have a funnel um, you have your merchandise, you have your links to your other uh, social media, you may have a Patreon link, uh, it's just, uh, you may have an email sign up, but all of that stuff, all that multiple stuff can be on your website. And the cool thing about a website is you own it, uh, especially if you have a WordPress website. A uh, WordPress website is a website that you can move around, you can move from one server or host to another company. Whereas something like Wix and Weebly, you're going to be stuck with those formats, which, you know, for some people may be fine. But again, uh, you know, if you have a huge following on Instagram and you get banned by Instagram, then what are you going to do? You know, or if Instagram were to go out of business, not that they are, but uh, just the cool thing about having a website is it's yours. You own it. You can move it around. You can do what you want with it and uh, it's just always a place to go back to. So everybody needs to get a website. So we've talked about hosting the website, coming up with a domain name, uh, things like that. So tonight we're gonna be talking about how to get traffic to your website because unfortunately, uh, unlike the movie, if you build it, they will not come, especially on the internet. And the reason is nobody knows that you're there. If they don't know that you're there, they don't know to come visit you. So you've got to let people know that you're online to get them to come to your website. So uh, really, honestly, the easy part is building the website. The hard part is keeping people coming to the website. And once they get to the website, getting them to stay or do what you want them to do. So uh, there's a lot of work involved. Um, I know if you're trying to start a side gig or a side hustle or business, uh, you're going to feel like maybe you don't have enough time 
to devote to also being a web designer, but don't think of it as being a web designer. The website is going to be probably your number one marketing tool. And so I think you, as the owner of the business or the side gig, you need to learn how to do your own um, web design and things like that. So, so the one thing that will get um, a, a huge amount of traffic to your website and do it organically, and, and any time that I mention organically, usually that just means for free. That means you're coming up with tactics to get people to do something uh, just through your tactics and not through money. So organically is getting people to come to your website without having to pay. And that, that number one uh, way is through search engines. And of course, the number one search engine by far, not even close, is Google. So how do you get people that go to Google and search for a keyword term, how do you get those people to come to your website? Well, uh, number one, you've got to rank uh, you know, high. You've got to be one of the top websites for those keyword phrases or keyword terms. And so uh, probably at least on the first page, it's always better to be number one, but even to just be on the first page, you can get a lot of traffic. So what I'm going to be telling you guys tonight is about on-page SEO. And what I mean by on-page means these are the things that you can do, that you can control about your page. So there are some off-page SEO uh, things that can be done to help you rank, but some of those you don't have control over, and we'll do those on a upcoming episode. But so today, tonight, or this episode is all about on-page SEO. And so what is SEO? Basically nothing more than search engine optimization, and what that means is you're optimizing your website for a search engine. So um, you can't just throw a website together and expect Google or a search engine to know what it's all about. There's certain things that you need to do on the page so Google knows exactly what your web page is about and uh, who it needs to rank for and all that good stuff. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So uh, things have changed as far as Google and traffic. Uh, back in the beginning when, you know, when I first started and a lot of us were building websites, is Google was ranking websites. And so if you had a website that was authoritative on a certain uh, keyword or subject and your, your just overall website had a lot of information about that, Google would rank your website, you know, either number one or at the top for those keyword phrases. The way that it has drastically changed is now Google doesn't really rank websites for keywords. They rank pages, a single page. So what Google wants is, you know, which page on the internet, I don't care which, they don't care which website, it, well, they do, but, you know, um, they want the most authoritative web page, not, not actually web site. And so that's what they're looking for. And uh, so one of the troubles that I had, if you guys have listened to some of the earlier episodes, part of my story is I built a hundred websites uh, within 10 years and had Google AdSense and other advertising on them. And I was ranking number one, or at least on the first page for a lot of keyword terms. And But I was building thin content websites, meaning they didn't have much information on them. They weren't really optimized. They were optimized to rank, but they weren't optimized to be authoritative. There was just no content on them. And uh, when the Panda update came out in 2012, that's what killed that whole business. And I had to move on to another business. So, so I'm kind of uh, an expert on how not to build websites. And so, um, so I kind of quit thinking about it. And now I'm slowly getting back into the SEO and how to get pages ranked. And so what I've learned, and I, and I didn't see it back in 2012, I just couldn't see it uh, because we were ranking websites really easily by just doing certain things and your homepage would, would rank really high, you know, and uh, so that's all you had to do is get your, your homepage on your website to rank for whatever keyword that wasn't super, you know, competitive. So, so the key to, um, to getting on page uh, SEO, number one is uh, the keywords. You've got to have the right keywords. And so when you're thinking about, okay, I'm building this website, I'm building this page, I want people to come to my website for what? 
And so what you need to think about, there's going to be a little bit of keyword research that goes on, and I'm, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on that right now. I mean, it's, I'm, try, I'm going to try to keep these episodes you know, manageable, but you guys will need to study some of that on your own. But what you're going to be looking for is keywords that are highly searched for but have the least amount of competition. And there are keyword websites out there that will help you find that. And then some of it you can find on your own just by using things in Google. But so that's what I was doing for, for 10 years was looking for keywords that a whole bunch of people in the world were searching for, but there weren't very many people that had websites that were giving them that information. And then that made it easy for me to rank number one. Now they were, you know, some really weird, like, uh, you know, dog names and tattoo designs with the word tattoo misspelled and um, uh, April Fool's pranks. Those were the type of keyword phrases and terms that I was ranking number one for. And uh, you may not think that uh, that would be something. And, and so it really had nothing to do with my business, a business at the time. It was just trying to get 100 websites that had really good keywords and then uh, just make money off of all of the traffic that came to all of those. So, so your keyword phrases. So, what you've got to research is whatever you're doing. If you're, you know, you're in an entertainment, you're selling something, you've got a service. You know, let's say it's on-page SEO. You know, you want to rank number one for on-page SEO. You know, something like that's going to be tough because there's so many, um, you know, people out there trying to rank for web design and SEO and make money online and, and all those keywords. So it's going to be tough, but uh, I'm not going to say that you guys can't get it done. But um, think about your keywords. And so, so like this page, this article that I've got on the, on the website, uh, curtistucker.com or thatbuzzguy.com, which uh, goes with this podcast and vlog, you know, it's not necessarily that I want that, I would love it to rank number one, but I'm not really concerned about my web pages ranking number one because I'm more interested in having you guys listen to a podcast and watch the vlog, the video. So, um, so I'm not you know, spending as much time as what somebody might need to, to spend on a web page. But, um, so think about your keywords. Those are going to be the, um, the things that are going to help Google know what you want to rank for. So let's say you're a musician and you like to play, you know, music in the clubs. You know, you need to look at keywords like indie musician, uh, independent music, independent uh, artist, you know, you might look at indie artist, indie musician in Oklahoma City, or, you know, you can, um, you, you can kind of tweak your keywords or your keyword phrases, but you've got to decide or, you know, um, growing the best tomatoes might be your keyword phrase. So whatever, whatever subject um, that you're wanting to rank for, you've got to figure out the words and, and really the words that you want to rank for are the ones that people are using to search for. So, um, so like if you you don't want to rank high for Oklahoma City lawyers, if people are searching for OKC attorneys, um, even though I think Google would you know probably give you a ranking because those are similar. But basically, what I'm saying is try to figure out and through Google and other sources. You can figure out what keywords people are searching for for certain things. And so you need to find those keywords and those keyword phrases, and that's what you're going to build your web page around. So, so keywords is, is the most important. you got to have the right keywords or nobody um, is going to find you. And again, uh, an example would be tattoo design. So I knew a lot of people were searching for tattoo designs. They were getting on Google and and the problem was, so that was a highly searched for keyword term, and there was a lot of people ranking for it. But what I found out was a lot of people didn't know how to spell the word tattoo, and they left out one of the T's. And so tattoo misspelled with one, you know, T-A-T-O-O, -O, tattoo designs, was searched for a lot, but there was not much competition because most people weren't building websites for the misspelled version of tattoo designs, 
which left that open for me. So I decided I would rank high for tattoo designs with the word tattoo misspelled. And so um, I, I was probably ranked number one or, you know, within the top five at some point. And so, um, you know, that was just an example. You're not going to be able to find, you know, keywords with misspellings anymore because uh, autocorrect, um, autocorrect actually killed that website and it went away. But anyway, so that's what I'm saying is you need to find um, search for keywords with the least amount of competition. And then once you get those keywords, you're going to have to sprinkle those throughout your web page. And so that's the next uh, few things. So so your URL, the URL is, is basically the address of the web page. So let's say the home page of my website is thatbuzzguy.com. That's the URL. That's what you type in or you see in the browser that shows you exactly where you're at. And so this um, article on my website is, the URL is curtistucker.com backslash on dash page dash SEO dash basics backslash. So, so I've used the words on page SEO basics in the URL. And so for this article, my keywords are on page SEO. And then I'm adding some different, I'm adding the words, um, factors, basics, tactics. I'm kind of mixing it up in case. So, because I didn't do any keyword research because that's, you know, not really as much what I'm concentrating on, but I know that some people are going to type in basics, some people tactics, some people, you know, tips, some people factors. And so I want to rank, try to rank for all of those, but the key part is the on-page SEO. And so the URL, um, again, I told you. So be sure that you have your keywords in the URL. You don't want in back before things evolved, like if you had a WordPress website and you did a new post, it might be um, curtistucker.com backslash 1874g2.html or something, you know, there, it just gave you these weird numbers or it gave you dates or things like that. But don't, uh, don't go with that anymore. Set your WordPress if you're, and I want everybody to eventually go to WordPress, but no matter what you're using, if you're using Weebly or Wix or WordPress, every page and every post that you do you want to have basically almost the title of the page as the URL, but you don't want to get them too long. Uh, you don't want to stuff them. Don't stuff anything. Everything that I tell you, don't overdo or you're going to get in trouble because that's that's how, that's how why the algorithm changes because people catch on to some things that work and then they, they think, you know, well, if one's good enough, I'll do 20. And then that's when uh, spamming starts and Google starts changing algorithms and then we all have to, you know, change and do things. So, so the you make sure so decide on your keywords. Make sure it's in the URL. Then also make sure it's in the title tag. And um, if you know absolutely nothing about web design or SEO, I'm talking completely above your head. But within so a web page. Um, oh, and I forgot to even mention. Um, I'm gonna have to backtrack here in a sec. But a web page is actually a uh, is actually built with um, HTML code or um, you know some type of code which basically when it's rendered on a browser it, it amounts to HTML co code well you you can't see the code on your browser that's making the page looks like it look like it does so um, because of the code that's hidden you know it makes your sidebar stay over to the side and your header stay at the top and and there's just different little tags and things that are hidden in the code that make your website look like it does. Well, in the header at the very top, there's a lot of information that, that Google and search engines find first, you know, when it comes to your website. And that's where there's these things called meta tags and they're hidden, but they tell a search engine, you know, what's the title of this website and what's a description of the website. And that's where you want to have your keywords in the title tag and the description tag. So, so to backtrack real quick, um, I was talking about how uh, Google doesn't really index web sites anymore. They're wanting to index just single web pages that are the best. And so what you need to do is think of every page that you do on your website, like it's a mini website. You need to 
put as much information in that one web page as you can get and make it the most authoritative, the best um, page on that subject or those keywords that you can make. Uh, so, um, you know, that's what a lot of these factors are going to do. So anyway, just kind of think of that and that, and it took me a while to actually, you know, one day it dawned on me that, oh, I need to create these really in-depth, authoritative, almost research type pages on these subjects. And if you do that, then that, those are the pages that are going to rank. So what you need to do is when you, when you create your page, you need to sit back and, you know, maybe, maybe leave it for an hour and come back or leave it for a day and come back. And then you need to honestly look at it. So go to the Google search engine and search it, search for the keywords that you're fighting for and see what pages come up in the top five and then go look at them and see how much information, how in depth they go, all the things that they have on their web page. And then go back and look at yours and honestly say to yourself, is my page better than theirs? Does it have more information? Is it the most authoritative out of all of the pages in the world? Is mine the best? And if it's not, you got some work to do. You got to keep working at it, but don't let that prevent you from all going ahead and uploading it because, you know, once you get uploaded, it's going to take a while for a new website to get into the Google index anyway, and then work it, its way up. Um, so uh, anyway, so get started. But anyway, think of every web page as kind of a mini website. So so um, you're going to have to find out through WordPress or Wix or Weebly. You're going to have to find a tutorial or something and and learn how to put those. Now with WordPress, there's plugins, there's SEO plugins that uh, show you where to put those title tags and description tag. And basically the title tag is just, you know, what's the title of the page? So the title of the page that I'm working from on my website, the title is on page SEO basics and how to rank high in Google. So it's actually got a lot more information in the title than the URL. The URL and the title don't always have to match. You can actually make them different and, and you want to use between 45 and 60 characters in your title. So don't make it too short because you've got extra space to add some key words, but don't make it too long because when it shows up in the Google search results, it's only going to show about 60 characters. So anything over that, um, number one, Google's maybe going to think that you're keyword stuffing, but number two, that title is just not going to show up in Google, and so nobody's going to be able to read it. So there's really no sense in having it there. So between 45 and 60 characters for your title, make sure you've got your uh, main keywords in it. Uh, and then there's the hidden description tag. That should be about 145 to 160 characters. Again, um, put information. The example on my page is, my description is, learn how to rank high in the Google search engine with these on-page SEO tactics. Optimize your page for more targeted traffic. And so a lot of times I like to mix things up so every keyword phrase and every set of keywords throughout my website don't match exactly. Um, I like to kind of rearrange them, use different words, and that way it seems a little more believable and organic to Google, and they don't think that you're um, stuffing keywords in there. So uh, put those keywords in the title and the description. And then throughout a website, you're going to notice that when you go to a web page, a lot of times the title is going to be bolder and bigger um, font um, than the rest. And then as you go down and if the page is broken up, there's going to be like, we call those headers. There's going to be a big header at the top. And then as you go through the website, the headers are going to be still be bold and bigger, but they're going to get smaller as you go down the web page. Those are called headers and they basically have H tags. So there's like H1, which is the biggest, boldest uh, title that you can have. And then there's H2, H3, H4. And so you want to add a few of those um, within your web page and, and those show a little bit of authority. And if you have like an H1 tag and it contains the keywords, then Google really knows, okay, they're like, okay, the URL has these keywords, the title tag, the, uh, the meta tag, title tag, you know, then Google starts to get the point and they're starting, they're going to start to think, okay, this web page is about on-page SEO. And so you want to have uh, on-page SEO. So on this web page, 
Um, if you're listening to the podcast or you're watching the vlog, eventually hop on over to uh, thatbuzzguy.com and, and look at this uh, blog post, and you'll see that I think I've got a an H4 um, header, and it says on-page SEO ranking factors. I, I added the word ranking, but it kind of makes that stand out. It kind of breaks up the page. And uh, again, it's another place for Google to know that the word SEO and on-page are very important terms to this page. So get those in the header tags. And then, all, then, we, then we move down to the body text. And the body text is basically just where your main content is going to be. And what you want to do is at the very top, you want to add... Um, you know, within the first paragraph or two, you want to be sure and have your most important primary keywords or keyword phrases up there because um, I can't remember, only past a certain amount of characters, um, Google's going to stop and it's not going to um, index those words after a certain point. Now, it is going to know that you have a whole bunch more words on the page, but as far as indexing those, it's only going to go a certain number. So within that first you know, 100 or 200, you want to be sure and have your primary keywords because that's what Google's going to read first when it comes to your page. So um, the body of the text, um, again, that's where all of your information is going to be, where uh, the content is, and you want to break it up. So you don't want to, like if you're going to write a really long article about on-page SEO, you don't want it just to be paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. And um, when people look at that, well, I know when I go to a web page and I look at that and there's all that text and there's nothing breaking it up, I'm like, eh, I don't have time to read all that. But if you break it up with a photograph or a graphic in between every now and then, or you use bullet points, or what I like to use is numbers, number points. And so like the, the post for this episode is numbered again. And so you can go to curtistucker.com or thatbuzzguy.com and look at this article and it's going to have all these listed by number. And then, so like the one we're talking about now is body text, which is number six. And so the word body text is actually in bold. And then there's a paragraph after it describing what body text is. So that kind of breaks it up. It makes it a little easier to read and to remember and to feel like you're not going to get overwhelmed with just a whole bunch of, you know, text coming at you. So um, be sure to break up um, long text and things like that. Make it look pleasing to the eye. Uh, and then as far as the body text and the actual content, uh, we want to talk about the word count. So, it, it, I mean, you can get really geeky about some of this SEO, but um, the word count, and that's really, you know, how long is the article that you're writing uh, they've done some studies. I know one guy that did a study and, uh, you know, the longer your article, the better. And I did not, rats, um, I'll have to go back. But I think before I um, um, went ahead and published this, I was around 1,300 words on this article. And I'll have to go back. I'll try to put the exact number. But um, if you want to rank fairly well, you probably need to at least have, it's going to sound crazy, but at least 800 words. And I would shoot for 1,800 words. Uh, again, I think they've done some studies and articles that have around 1,800 words were some of the top ranked pages out there. And um, you can't just, uh, don't just ramble on and just add words for no apparent reason other than just trying to make the article longer. The, uh, the sentences and the paragraphs and the words that you're using need to relate to the article and be informative. And, and so don't just go adding words just to add words. Make sure everything, um, you know, has to do with the subject. And then on that front as well, at the word count, you need to go back and count how many times you've used your keyword phrase or how many times your keywords or keyword phrases are mixed in. And you want to keep that at about 3% of the total um, words on the page, just because if you go, you know, too high, let's say you went 10% uh, 
um, Google's going to think that you're keyword stuffing, which people used to do uh, back back in the day. I bet you guys just love it when I say that. But back in the day, um, there were some guys, and I've actually even seen literally in 2020, I've seen websites where they would take huge paragraphs and just it was nothing but keywords, and they would make they would put it at the bottom of the page and make the font color match the background color of the web page so the people coming to the website couldn't see it but google could still read it and um you know back at that point those websites would get ranked fairly well until google discovered that they were doing that and then they you know they made algorithm changes where they can tell whether you're doing that so anyway don't uh, keyword stuff but try to get to um you know 1500, 1800 words on your articles. If it's an article that you're wanting to rank. Now, if you're just throwing a little article out there that you're just, you're just saying something, you know, not everything that you write on your blog or your website, you're going to, you're not going to be able to rank number one for every page. So you have to kind of pick and choose what, what are your most important topics and subjects and keywords. So every now and then you can just throw a, um, you know, you don't want to have too many pages on your blog or website that are only a paragraph long, that's where you get into that thin content. And if most of your website is made up of pages that are only one paragraph long, then you're going to get slammed with that uh, thin content penalty, which is what killed me in 2012. So uh, make sure a lot of your articles are at least 800 words um, or, or longer. Um, that makes your whole website overall seem more authoritative. So... Uh, the next thing is images. You, you need lots of text and lots of words, but you also need images. Rarely can you go to a web page and enjoy the web page without having at least one image. And when I'm talking images, it could be a photograph or it could be a graphic. Uh, infographics have become really big and memes and things like that. But usually, especially with uh, most of the the blogging and web building software now is they almost all include a photo at the top, um, below the header, but above the text. And uh, WordPress does that. And so that's where I usually have my photo. If you've got a really long, like uh, the article I did on flying with the Thunderbirds, I kind of, every couple of par paragraphs, I would add another photo of something I was doing in the plane with the Thunderbirds. So um, it is kind of fun to add more photos, but um, make sure you're not uploading really heavy, slow loading photos because you want your, that's going to be, we're going to get down to that. You want things to load fast. So, um, so on the article on on-page SEO on my website, um, I added an image. And so when you're thinking about, you know, if you're thinking about growing tomatoes, you just find a picture of tomatoes, somebody planting tomatoes or slicing them or digging them up or holding a tomato. Uh, when it came to on-page SEO, you know, you have to get a little more creative. So I didn't, I didn't really want to create a graphic. So I took a picture of myself, you know, looking kind of goofy and typing on the keyboard. And when I took that picture, it ended up being a 3.7 megabyte size photo, which is, you know, the, the pixels were just really huge. But what I did um, on my Mac now, I used to use Photoshop. Now I just use um, the image editor because it, it does all this stuff for you. I reduced the size of that huge image down to 900 pixels wide by 470 pixels tall because that's the requirements for the WordPress theme that I'm using. And uh, I put it at 72 DPI, and that dropped the size of that photo from 3.7 megabytes to 178 kilobytes. Now, if I were to do a speed test on that page, it would probably tell me that 178 kilobyte image is probably too big and needs to be even optimized more, which it can be. Um, so you need to get your photos, and that, again, that could be a whole nother episode and maybe we'll talk about that at some other point, but you've got to figure out how to optimize your photos so they look really good and crisp and clear, but they've got to load really, really fast. Um, and so the image, so I took an image of myself typing on the keyboard. 
optimized it and then I changed it was like uh, I don't because I'd used I, 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 I don't know I think I'd use Snapseed maybe to um, crop it or something and so it was you know Snapseed.jpg so I changed the name of the photo to on page seo.jpg. So again, you're wanting to use that, um, that keyword term or phrase. You want to also use that on the image. And so then I uploaded the image into WordPress. And then once you have images into WordPress and probably the other platforms, you can add information into the title, the alt tag, the description, the caption. Now I don't usually, I usually just do the title and the alt um, tag. So the alt tag is, is just information. If, if somebody blind came to your website, um, a computer could read the alt tags and tell the person what the photo was. So uh, my alt tag isn't exactly what my photo is, but um, that's what the article is about. So, so the name of the photo is on page SEO. Well, it's on dash page dash SEO dot JPEG. The alt text is on page SEO tactics. And then the title of the photo is on page SEO factors. And what I found out back in, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I was doing all my websites and stuff, I was getting a lot, because I was doing a lot of cartoons and clip art and logos, I was learning that if you would optimize your photos, and I mean optimize every photo with, by name, alt tag, and title, they rank really high in Google Images. And I tell you, you would be super duper surprised at how many people search Google Images for images. And so if you're photographs or images or graphics come up number one or at the top, people are going to come to your website. Um, now, they might steal your images a little bit more, but uh, if you have a copyright, you know, um, on them or something, then you can kind of prevent that. But uh, I used to get a ton, a ton of traffic to my clip art website by having all of my clip art images optimized and, and highly ranked in the Google image search. So Google image search engine is almost as big as just the regular search engine. So make sure all of your images um, have all the right keywords and tags on them. Uh, also on your page, you're going to need to think about links. Uh, for some reason, Google likes an authoritative web page to link out. So that means you're going to have an external link to some other website. You're not going to be trading links. You're just going to so what I did was I, I added a link to the Google search engine because I'm wanting to rank high in Google and it was just an example. So if you look on there, the, the words Google search engine are linked externally to google.com. And so the point there being the keywords that I was using are search engine. So when you're linking to things or having people link to you, always try to use keywords in the text link, not just your name, but also whatever your keywords are. So um, add at least one or two external links to some other website. Uh, number 10 on this list of on-page SEO is loading speed. And uh, if you don't know a whole lot about uh, SEO and web design, you it would boggle your mind at how much information Google knows, not only about you, but how much they know about websites. And so they know how fast a web page loads. And they know that if it loads really slow, a lot of people aren't going to wait and they're going to um, back click and go find another page and try to go find their information. And so they even know how quickly you click back to go back to Google. You know, that's one of the one things that you do not want people to do. You don't want people to search in Google for a keyword, have you come up, have them click on your link, go to your website and almost immediately back out and go look for a, and click on a different website because that tells Google oh, wow, this website wasn't what they were looking for. It obviously didn't have the right information because then you're going to start dropping in the rankings. So you want to get people to your website, and once you get them there, you got to keep them 
on the page. But one of the factors is loading speed. If you've got a whole bunch of images at the top of the page and they're loading really slow, people get frustrated within, I mean, just a couple of seconds. And they will back, you know, they'll hit the back link or back and they'll go to another page. So um, there are websites out there where you can put your URL and they will tell you what your page speed is. And a lot of them will actually even tell you okay, your this page is loading slow because of this image, and then they'll give you guidance as to how to optimize that image. Or sometimes it's like a big bloated JavaScript code in the header or things like that, and there's different ways of optimizing that stuff. So uh, make sure that you test your pages and that they are loading fast. And then um, in the old days, uh, newspaper, you know, newspapers are folded in half and and they're thrown down like on a table. Well, the part that you see that, you know, when the newspaper is folded and it's right side up, the part that you see is what they call above the fold. And above the fold is also important, not only in newspapers, but it's important in websites or web pages. And so when somebody goes to a web page, depending on how, what browser they're on, now this doesn't so much uh, work in like mobile because mobile websites look way different and there's very little above the fold. But on a on a computer, when you go to a web page, um, right when it opens, everything that you can see is basically above the fold. If you have to scroll to see what's down towards the bottom of the page, then the scrolling makes it no longer above the fold. So the things that you want above the fold are your best, most primary keywords. That's why you want to keep them up there at the top, the first paragraph or two. Um, if you have slow loading or big photographs or graphics or PDFs or um, like, like my podcast, the embed for my podcast and my a video. I put all that at the bottom of the content because that makes it below the fold. So that means, you know, those are the last things to load and Google can already grab the information that they want at the top, which is the text and the keywords that I'm wanting to rank for. So make sure that you have your most important quick loading stuff above the fold and anything else below the fold. Um, the overall user experience, I just kind of talked about that a little bit. Uh, you want a person coming to your website to have the best experience possible, meaning um, when they search for on-page SEO and your link pops up, the first thing is, you know, when they come to your page, number one, they want it to load fast. Number two, they want the page to be about on-page SEO. So don't trick people. And that's what, that's what used to happen in the old days, and that's why Google was always tweaking their algorithm. Um, you know, some of these uh, Viagra and those type of websites were using keywords like how to make money online. And when people would go to the website thinking they were going to learn how to make money online, it would be, you know, a website selling Viagra. So, um, so user experience is important. Make sure it loads fast. Make sure when they get to your page, it's about the subject is about whatever you are ranking for and then make sure you have valuable information. And so you're wanting to have a call to action, a headline, a photograph. You want to have something to grab their attention when they get to your website, because you, again, you don't want them to look at it and say, oh, I don't like this page, or this doesn't look like it has the information that I want, because then they're going to click back. Google's going to see that, and Google's going to know your web page is not the right page for those keywords and you're going to get dinged on that. So make sure that uh, that once you get them to your page that, um, and that's called bounce rate. The bounce rate is um, how quickly they leave. Um, so you want them to get on your page and start reading. You want to um, lead them from the, you know, the home page into a services page or a call to action page, or you, you want to lead them somewhere. And so the longer that you can keep them on your website, the higher you're going to rank and the better uh, user experience they're going to have. And so that literally is one of the ranking factors is um, what they call time on page. So what's the average time somebody is spending on your page? You don't want it to be five seconds. You know, you want it to be five minutes, which, you know, I don't think that uh, you'd be doing pretty good to have a, a website where the average 
uh, on on page was five minutes. So, uh, but that is another factor. There's a click through rate. So, uh, another deal is you don't you want to have good information, and then if you don't have it, you want to. That's why you have external links to other authoritative sites. You want people to come to your web page, and then you want them to go to where you want to send them. So send them to another website, send them to a place to sign up for your email. Um, that is the click through rate. You know, how, how many people do you get to leave your website, but go further, you know, somewhere rather than backing up, going back to Google. You, once they get to your website, you don't want them going back to Google. That is not a good signal. Uh, to send to Google that somebody came to your website and was unhappy and had to go back to the Google search and check out the next one. So try to get them to your web page once you get them there, uh, give them the information, valuable information that they need, and then send them to where you want them to go next, you know, a corresponding website or to sign up or something like that. So uh, that all goes into kind of that user experience um, category. And then the last one we're going to call extras. And um, again, we never know that Google never, re and, and I keep saying Google just because it is the, the one that you want to rank in, but Google never really tells you what are the exact factors to make your website rank high, because if they told everybody, then it would be a mess. So they kind of keep it a secret, but um, we kind of think that embedding a podcast or a video onto your page could also help. Number one, because it's added content in a different platform, but you want to make sure that the title of the video, the title of the podcast, have your keywords in it again. And so again, there's using those keywords and the keyword phrases. Again, you don't want to stuff, but you want to use those keywords everywhere that you can. And so if you'll notice on um, that buzzguy.com, each article that I make a podcast for, if you click and you go to the web page at the bottom, there is uh, embedded the podcast, and then below that is embedded the video. And so you don't even have to leave my website to listen to the podcast or watch the video. They're all right there on every page, which again, hopefully, eventually that will help with all of your ranking. So those are kind of just the extra things um, that could help you get ranked. And so what I want you guys to do is, again, um, learn a little bit more of this on your own, do a little bit more research uh, on SEO, on-page SEO, and uh, you guys will soon be ranking high. And again, if you pick keywords that uh, there's not a lot of comp competition for, it's not going to take uh, long and it's not going to take as much work. Um, to rank high for. And so, what, and then what we're going to learn uh, maybe a future episode is using some external uh, factors for ranking high. Um, and, but that's getting a little more hardcore and we'll get into that later. So uh, before I get out of here, um, let me make sure, um, you know, you can niche down. Don't forget about if you're having trouble ranking for, so let's say I wanted to rank for on page SEO. Um, and I wasn't ranking, you know, I tried and I tried and I tried. Again, if you're a new website, don't forget, it is going to take a little while, a couple months before you even start showing up in the Google search engine. But let's say I finally started showing up and I'm ranking on page eight. Well, being on page eight isn't going to help you hardly at all. Um, so you might want to change your keyword or your keyword phrase from on page SEO to something like on page SEO basics for a WordPress website. Now that seems really long, but you're kind of, you're niching down, you're making it more than on page SEO. It's on page SEO for WordPress. And so what we call those is long tail keywords and long tail keywords are just a lot of keywords that are longer. They have a lot of word, more words to them. But, um, you know, if you can get, you know, a little bit of traffic for a hundred long tail keywords, you can get almost as much traffic as somebody that ranks number one for just the one term. So long tail keywords come in really, really handy. So think about those or, or think about niching down on the keywords that you're using if you are having trouble 
um, ranking. So, so trying to rank for like New York real estate would be almost impossible, but you know, maybe you could rank number one for, uh, Brooklyn, some neighborhood real estate. And then, so, you, so again, you're not going to get as many searches, but there's going to be less competition. And so that's what you're looking for is those type of keywords. So anyway, that is kind of the on page SEO basics, factors, tactics, tips that you guys should use to get your web pages. Don't forget your you're concentrating on web pages. Don't make multiple pages. So, so like on uh, thatbuzzguy.com. Now, I'm not going to go make another page, you know, a week from now about on-page SEO. Don't stuff your website or your blog with multiple posts on the same topic unless you know there's some caveats or there's some you know different things you know, that would cause you to do that. So be careful there. Also, don't forget that, let's say, let's say I've written this blog post, you know, um, May 14th, 2020, uh, you know, a year and a half from now, you can go back and you can refresh that, maybe update a couple of the bullet points, change the date and republish that so it pops up to the top of your blog. So don't forget that you can go back into your old blog posts, freshen them up a little bit, change the the uh, upload date, publishing date to whatever date that day is, and uh, that might help those rank if they didn't get ranked or they start to drop in ranking. So uh, a lot of little things like that. And I'm sure I can, we could probably go into almost a whole nother episode of SEO. So I'll talk about that later. But anyway, um, thank you guys for checking in. I'm going to get out of here and you guys don't forget, uh, get started. Uh, if you're wanting to do, a, do a, a website, go to Wix, Weebly, Tumblr, Blogger.com, or go to Google and search for free websites. If you want to do a podcast, download the Anchor app and you can do that on uh, Android or Google. Start recording right into your phone. There's no microphone, no mixer needed. They will upload that to iTunes and stuff for you. Or if you're wanting to do video, set up a YouTube channel, turn on your phone and just start recording and then upload those. Make sure you use keywords, the correct titles, the correct descriptions, all that stuff for every video that you do as well. Because um, and then even on your podcast descriptions, use keywords and hashtags. And I mean, this stuff just goes on and on and on. But the more that you use it, the, then those even those different platforms know where and how to rank you. So um, it's just ever go, you know, nonstop, always, always looking for the little ways of um, ranking uh, better than everybody else. So anyway, you guys can send questions to buzz at buzzheadmedia.com and find me on Twitter and YouTube and podcasting and the website. Basically, if you go to thatbuzzguy.com, you're going to be able to get links or information to just about everywhere that I am. So everybody have a great day and I will talk to you soon. See ya. Mm-hmm.